spot your shadow self and if you don't know what the shadow is i would suggest you go back in the channel and listen to various videos where i talk about shadow work or just look for the shadow work playlist um but short answer is these are the parts of yourself that we tend to hide from each other from ourselves excuse me parts of ourselves that we tend to hide from ourselves or parts of ourselves that needs to be acknowledged so that we can be the best us that we can be, okay? Now, you wanna know how to spot your shadow self because this is a part of you that is hidden inside of you, right? And spotting your shadow often begins with noticing your triggers, okay? Anybody that has worked with me on a personal basis knows that I will always tell you to mind your triggers especially if you come into me as a practitioner right because as a practitioner i am going to say some things that will trigger you we're going to take a journey into places that will trigger you okay this means that you will have to notice um your patterns of behavior um you'll have to journey through your life experiences and you will have to understand when you are projecting things, okay? Now, projection, projection is when you have a trait that you are denying about yourself and you're trying to experience that trait. So what you do is you push this trait onto another person so they can mirror it back to you so you can experience it. That's projection. And that might be a little technical and a lot for some of y'all to understand. But, you know, just ask your questions in the comment. And if need be, another video for clarity, we can do that, right? Now, step one is noticing your triggers, okay? Now, triggers are emotional responses that are often intense, okay? And they are oftentimes disproportionate to the situation at hand, okay? And they are indicators that a part of you which is often a shadow aspect of yourself okay feels threatened or hurt okay so you know we do have expressions where well if you do something to somebody you can't tell them how to respond and this is true but oftentimes even when we say such things we do understand that sometimes a reaction can be overkill for what the situation is oftentimes when those things happen this is an unhealed part of the self or an unacknowledged part of the self if you will okay because unacknowledged parts of the self create harmful instances because these are parts of you that have essentially been alienated or separated from the self fragmented pieces okay this is where you get things like service tools and, and thought forms and that's for different parts of magic for those of you that practice magic y'all know what that is okay so when you trigger it can feel as if you react automatically like it's an instantaneous response it's, it almost feels like it's a natural response to um a particular situation like it's not consciously done, right? Um, these triggers provide you clues, okay? To point towards your deeper unresolved issues or the shadows, okay? Now, to spot your triggers, you know, you want to take a step back and objectively look at situations that cause you to react very intensely. Is there a common theme or factor? okay it, it, it could be a word it could be an action it could be a type of person it could be a, a place that causes emotional upheaval inside of yourself okay if you in a particular situation and, 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 and you just your automatic reaction is to go all the way off the deep end okay 
if you know this about yourself, when you come across those situations because you have consciously decided that this is something that you do, then you need to take a deep breath, you know, practice your grounding techniques, take a step back. And assess the situation. This is how you start to, you know, realize what your triggers are. Second is recognizing patterns, okay? Patterns are repetitive behaviors that may serve you but seem hard to break free from, okay? Like, they don't do the best thing for you. And you might, it might do more harm than it does do it, but you can't stop doing it. Right, you know, snapping out on people and, I don't know, putting your hands on folks or cutting up somebody's clothes or cussing everybody out or, you know, not giving you the best result, but for some reason, you just can't seem to shake that part of yourself, okay? Now, oftentimes, these things manifest in your relationships, in, in choices and reactions or in habits, okay? And these patterns are signs of shadow self as well they can be not always but sometimes the patterns that you have can point you toward your shadow it is trying to let you know that it is there okay again these are parts of ourselves that we hide from ourselves and so it is a part of you that feels alienated and lost okay now once you begin to recognize these particular patterns okay that means that you have started to embark upon the area of self-reflection, introspection that is necessary to start to manage itself and integrate those shadows in a way that is going to be more effective toward you so they don't feel alienated and are actually causing you more detriment than good, okay? So you want to consider the common threads that come from your past experiences, okay? Um, your past relationships or your past reactions, all right? Think about if you are drawn to um, similar types of relationships or situations um, and you continue to experience the same outcome, okay? Do you react in the same way even when you wish you didn't react this particular way, okay? Now, when you notice these sorts of things, these are the places where doing shadow work might be beneficial to you, okay? Step three is understanding your projections. Remember I said projections is when you kind of impress your own personality, ways, thoughts, on another person in order for you to basically experience yourself. So, projections are aspects of yourself that you unconsciously place onto other people. And these can be qualities that you admire or qualities that you detest, okay? It doesn't always have to be negative, okay? When you have a strong sense of emotional reaction to somebody else's behavior, it is often signifying that there is a alienated part of yourself that needs to be addressed, okay? When you find yourself projecting things on people, whether it be positive or negative, because sometimes you can just be like, oh my God, you know, this person is so creative and, and outgoing, I wish I was that way, you know? This is oftentimes, you know, in layman's terms, a lot would be like, you, you're putting a person on a pedestal, you know what I'm saying? Those sorts of things or you know, uh, every time they come around, they, 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 you know, that sort of thing. Those, those sometimes can be projections, okay? Now, in order to understand your projections, what you need to do is understand the character of others that you find irritating. Or that you admire very strongly. And then, you need to ask yourself if these traits are part of you, Okay? And you have to be very honest with yourself because oftentimes we don't want to identify with those things that we are uncomfortable with. But sometimes <laughs> those things very well are things that we need to deal with. 
Number four is to pay attention to your dreams, okay? Now, your dreams are rich and full of symbolism, and it's like a vault of unconsciousness. Now, you can recall and record your dreams when you wake up, you know? Keep a dream journal. Write them down so you can go back, because dreams have a way of kind of slipping away as your consciousness starts to, you know, retake over you know, in your day-to-day -day life, all right? You want to look at the symbols that come up in your dreams. You want to recall the emotions that you felt while those things were going on. You want to look at the things that are present in your dreams. If you have something that is oftentimes recurring, it might be something that you need to pay attention to, okay? Because they can be pointing to a shadow part of you. Remember, the, the, the shadow parts of you are hidden there very deeply. Most of the time by the ego because the ego is there to protect you. And if you understood that this shadow is part of you, that might hurt you. Right? But if you are doing shadow work, you are ready to realize that, you know, I, I got some parts of me that I need to address. And, you know, it's okay because, you know, everybody has a shadow, right? And it's okay. Number five is to explore childhood and past experiences, okay? Because reflecting on your childhood and your family dynamics and significant life, life events can help you identify unresolved issues or, or traumas or unmet needs that may have contributed to the development of certain shadows, okay? Remember, these are about alienated parts of yourself. This is why you out here people talk about, okay, heal your inner child. What didn't you get growing up that you wish you could have had? You know, what needs did you feel like you did not meet? Although most of us had parents that love us and wanted the best for us, you got to understand, parents are humans too. And it is almost impossible for any human being to 100% fully meet the needs of another, right? And so if you feel alienated in a particular way growing up, as an adult, you can give those things to yourself. You just have to identify what they are and take steps into um, fixing that, okay? Now, exploring these experiences and giving yourself some compassion and also being curious as to why they are there and why they exist can help you heal. It can also lead to you properly integrating your shadow, okay? And so, that's what we'll talk about next. How do you integrate your shadow? Alright? So, y'all yeah, things like a lovely while spending... Oh, if you need personal assistance, please visit the website, sunkissspiritualconsulting.com or just leave a comment down here, you know, um, you can message me on the website, I will get your messages, I do respond to them, or you can just leave a comment, I'll be more than happy to address you here, okay? And on that note, y'all stay dark and lovely while spreading your loving light. I'll see y'all next video. Peace.